Hey, what's up guys? It's Jonathan with Referee Moto. I'm here in the Outer Banks. Uh, behind me is the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. And if you've ever been here before, you can see that it's a little bit different than it usually is. Uh, it's got all these scaffolding and all this uh, around it. They are constantly working on this lighthouse and trying to get it to where people can, uh, to where they can, re it's fully restored and people can visit it. Uh, but I've been waiting for the past couple years trying to get into this place and it's just always, always, uh, you know, being worked on, but that's all good. Uh, it's still beautiful to look at and uh, we're thankful that it's still here today. Um, if you've never been uh, to visit this lighthouse before, it's kind of got an interesting story. Back in the, I believe the late 90s, I could be wrong, but I think it was the late 90s, they actually moved the lighthouse, I'm going to kind of turn a little bit, um, to uh, from, from this spot here. It actually was a lot closer to the ocean, and uh, it was getting ready to... Uh, I guess fall into the ocean um, or there was there was risk that the because of the, the way that the sands always moving down here in the Outer Banks there was a, a very big concern that uh, as the the ocean kind of was getting closer and closer that it was going to wash the lighthouse away and so instead of letting it fall into the sea they uh, you can look up videos on this it's amazing how they did it but they actually put it, the whole thing you know on uh, like tank tracks and and moved it to where to where it sits now and so uh, we still get to enjoy this uh, amazing historic lighthouse that has uh, saved so many the lives of so many sailors in this area where shipwrecks are uh, incredibly common uh, we're gonna go for a quick uh, ride down to uh, the um, end of the outer bank so at least as far as you can go without getting on a ferry uh, down to the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum, that area. So uh, please join me, and uh, thanks again so much for tuning in and riding with me today. All right. If you are new to the channel, I don't always ride a Triumph. Uh, this is uh, a motorcycle that I am renting while I'm down here in the Outer Banks. And uh, so it's a uh, Triumph, it's a 2018 Triumph Bonneville T120. Uh, and uh, so far it's a, it's been a blast to ride. Um, I'm seeing some, <laughs> this, this poor bike's got some, it looks like it's maybe got a leak going on here. I don't know, it's the first time I've really studied it in any detail. But the owner did check the oil, he assured me, prior to me picking it up. So we'll keep rolling and hope for the best. I've been having some issues with this thing starting. Um, I don't know if it's a battery issue or what, but uh, I started it up earlier today and it was fine. But uh, then I went to start it before this ride, and it went click, 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 and I key cycled it a few times, and then it started. So <laughs> it's like, um, I'm just hoping I don't get stranded somewhere. I did pay for the $5 a day, like, uh, breakdown coverage, but I don't want to be waiting on the side of the road for a tow truck if I can help it. But that's part of the adventure, right? Right? Yeah. So again, one last look at the Hatteras Lighthouse, Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, in its new location, moved back in the late 90s, all surrounded by a scaffolding. One day we'll be able to go up inside of it, hopefully. If you've never been to the Outer Banks, it is a wonderful place to, to visit keep looking for my Harley uh, turn signals, my flipper flappers. This thing's got something wrong with the turn signals too. It's uh, They don't flash. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. It's uh, 
well, I'm beginning to wonder if this is like what a Triumph, you know, like British vehicles, like uh, Jaguars have all these electrical issues. I'm beginning to wonder if Triumph has their own electrical ghosts as well. If you have a Triumph and you've had any experience with it as far as electrical issues um, or anything like that, I'd love to, to hear from you. Please put something in the comments. Um, I just have no experience with Triumph motorcycles and um, it, it might just be this bike just because it's a rental bike or whatever, but I, uh, I do think it's a blast to ride. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's very torquey, not the fastest thing ever, but it's definitely got plenty of go-go juice. And you can uh, really wind the gears out, uh, which is interesting because it's kind of a strange power band. Um, I'm used to a V-twin, all the power is between like 1500 and 3000 RPMs. And this is so different in that the, the tachometer goes up to 6000 RPMs. And I love it, it's so wonderfully British because it says 60 on the tachometer instead of like 6000 or six times 1000 or something. British always have to do it the British way, so uh, I think it's cool, but the power bands, uh, like, it's there all the way, you know, it's, it almost like isn't there, and then it's at like 1,000, 2,000 RPMs, it's not there at all, and then you wind it up just a little bit, and it's, it's just like, boom, there it is. Probably could have made it, but <clears throat> we'll be good. This is we're down here in uh, Buxton right now, Buxton, North Carolina, in the Outer Banks. Now it always makes me think of uh, the movie Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which uh, you've probably not seen, but. It, when I was a kid, I used to watch that thing, all that movie, all the time. And Pee Wee's Big Adventure was uh, that he had a uh, Pee Wee Herman had a like a really rich enemy, the one that actually stole. I don't want to spoil anything. It's a really funny movie if you like Pee Wee, but um, apparently his friend Francis Buxton was uh, very rich and uh, wanted to, was very jealous of Pee Wee's amazing uh, bicycle. And so he um, stole the bike or had it stolen or something like that. But anyway, it, it was, uh, every time I come through Buxton, I always think of Francis Buxton. Kind of fun. It's 25 through here, so I'm like I'm trying to get through this 25 zone. There was a little bit of rain hitting my uh, helmet earlier, but so far I have not seen it resurface. So I'm thankful for that. It's kind of like it's almost like Florida down here, where the weather can change in an instant because you're in the middle of the ocean, kind of. But it's a pretty little uh, town or village or whatever it is. I wanted to talk about uh, three uh, reasons why I uh, think that it's so much easier to rent a motorcycle when I'm on vacation or when, when on vacation than uh, three reasons why I, I rent or a motorcycle when I'm on vacation. And so the first reason is that, you know, it it's a new way to explore uh, wherever you are. So if you're going to my first time renting a motorcycle when I was on vacation was when I was in Hawaii before my wife and had, I had children. We were able to 
afford a trip to Oahu and Kauai, Hawaii. And Kauai is uh, a like 550 square mile island. It, they call it the Garden Island. And um, it's just a, a beautiful, like lots of amazing places to go and see. And they, I was able to find a place that rented motorcycles. And I rented a Harley Davidson Road King when I was um, in Hawaii, in Kauai with my wife. And she rode on the back. And that was a game changer for me. I tell you, I had never ridden a bike, like a touring bike like that. And I wanted a Road King so bad after that. But I just rode it for hours and hours. I had a 24 hour rental. And I want to say it was like $200 or something like that. For 24 hours. Talk about price gouging. I'm getting this motorcycle um, through rider share with insurance, with uh, damage waiver, all that stuff uh, for just under $100 a day. I think it's $95 a day when it's all said and done. And 200 bucks for 24 hours was highway robbery. But uh, you're in Hawaii, right? So I guess they can charge what they want. Um, but yeah, we rode that thing all over. I got sunburned riding it. And, uh, you know, just like there was one uh, place. It's almost like a, a miniature Grand Canyon called the Y. They call it the Waimea Canyon. Uh, rode the motorcycle through the Waimea Canyon, the, the Road King. Uh, it was just uh, made it so much more of an experience and so the you know the first reason to rent a motorcycle um, when you're on vacation is uh, is that experience you know I also uh, rented one um, a BMW GS adventure I think it was when I went to Ireland with my wife in 2013 that was a difficult trip. It was our first trip away from our daughter, who was like, I want to say three at the time. Uh, she was born in 09, so yeah, she was like three, three and a half. Three and a half, yeah. So we, uh, my wife and I, uh, we rented a BMW GS and rode around Ireland um, on that vacation. And that was definitely an interesting experience uh, because in Ireland, they ride on the opposite side of the road. So they ride on the left instead of the right. And so what I we rented a car um, before we uh, rented the motorcycle and I kind of got used to driving on the left-hand side of the road before I rented the motorcycle. And, road, a motorcycle on the wrong side of the road, or the left side of the road, because uh, it's weird, I mean, if you've never done that before, it, it takes some adjustment, for sure, but once you get kind of used to it, it's not so bad, but, uh, man, it was, it was wild at first, uh, but, you know, it kind of, it, it's, again, it's an adventure, you know, you're, you're riding in another country, uh, on a motorcycle, like, this is like when are you going to get the opportunity to do that again um, and I, I haven't been back to Ireland and maybe you know I hope that one day I will but I haven't been back since 2013 and you know so it's like when you have the opportunity if you don't do it you'll never know Woo, that was close one bird uh, and then here you know renting this motorcycle in the Outer Banks just uh just awesome like uh, it takes the the experience to a whole new level it's uh it's one thing to ride around this place in a jeep or in a car in an suv whatever but it's an entirely different experience uh, to get on a bike and enjoy where you are this new place uh this this new experience on a motorcycle so Number one is the experience. You know, it's it's worth the experience. Uh, number two is it's so much easier than trailering a motorcycle. It's so much easier because um, if you 
trailer to motorcycle uh, and I'm sure if you've done it before you know maybe it's no big deal but there's a lot of things that are working against you uh, number one is you gotta strap it down and if you've not done this a lot that can be and you don't do it the right way you could damage a motorcycle you could scratch it uh, you could uh, do it the you could strap down the incorrect way and end up having your motorcycle uh, fall while in transit uh, talk about a nightmare can you imagine um, you know looking back at your flat trailer and your motorcycles on its side or you have an enclosed trailer and you have no way of knowing the entire way if the motorcycle is falling over I mean obviously if you do your research and you strap it down correctly you're not gonna have that problem uh, but the way my luck runs uh, mine would be probably on its side and uh, fall off the trailer too so you know for me it's just easier to not have to worry about it um, and then you know on top of that like bringing my motorcycle down to this area uh, you know it's exposed to the beach you know the spray the ocean you know the you could get some surface rust on the chrome if you're down here for an extended period there's nowhere to, to garage it uh, you might have a rental house that you're um, you're lucky enough to have a place to park that's out of the weather uh, some of the I mean otherwise your your motorcycle sitting out in the elements um, unless you have a covered trailer and then if you have a covered trailer and now you gotta put it on the trailer every time you bring it back to the house or you know back it out every time you want to go somewhere so to me there are lots of reasons why uh, it's worth it, you know, to 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 not have the trailer. Uh, you know, then there's the trailer itself. You know, like what kind of problems might you have with the trailer? You know, how many of you who pull trailers have uh, gotten a blowout? You know, had a tire go bad on you um, in the middle of your trip, and now you're on the side of the road trying to change a tire if you're smart enough to have a spare tire for your trailer and if you're not now you're really screwed right um, there's other issues that can happen with trailers you know uh, as far as the uh, elect electrical connections and them being uh, you know an older trailer uh, I'm sure anyone who's got a trailer had a, had a trailer any length of time can relate to the fact that the lights always don't want to work don't always want to work so you could have problems with the tail lights or you could have problems with the man it could dark fast you could have problems with the tail lights or the turn signals or the brake lights you know uh, something with an electrical connection uh, or whatever and so now you're not legal and you got to worry about getting a ticket um, things like that so trailers are convenient to move a motorcycle from place to place but at the same time they can also be kind of a pain and so that's the second reason you know is uh, to rent a motorcycle when you're on vac vacation is you don't have to trailer it and then the third reason that I feel that it is worth it to rent a motorcycle while you're on vacation is because it really doesn't cost that much if you think about it. You talk about like experience costs to versus uh, the actual cost of the vacation. So. I did another video where I kind of broke down the cost of, you know, of how much it costs to uh, to rent a motorcycle through rider share, or this particular motorcycle. And a different motorcycle probably would have been a little bit more. I know the Harley, the Harley Davidson that this gentleman had that I rented from uh, cost it a little bit more per day. But uh, this motorcycle for five days was, you know. It, just under $500 so it's under 100 bucks a day and I can ride this thing as much as I want I've got the peace of mind knowing that uh, I'm covered 
uh, if there's any damage, any incidents. Um, wow, there's some weird lighting going on down here. It's like a, riding into a sandstorm, too. I hope it doesn't um, mess up the, uh, the lens of the camera. It looks like a, there's a storm of ruin, and I'm really hoping I'm not riding right into it. <laughs> Nervous laughter. Oh well, I'll try to find an overhang or a gas station somewhere because there's so many of those down here. Uh, the, the ocean is like right on the other side of these uh, sand barriers, this, these little dunes here. It's kind of a interesting place to visit down here. It's, it's really cool. If I, uh, once this car passes, I can stand up on my pegs. You can see the ocean. The truck behind me is like, what is this guy doing? Wow, this lighting is incredible. That's one thing that uh, I've really noticed down here in the Outer Banks is the skies at night and in the morning. Not that I have been getting up super early on this vacation, but uh, one of these mornings I might take a, a morning ride. The sunrise and the sunset over the sound, just absolutely, absolutely incredible beautiful um, so yeah back to the cost sorry I'm uh, uh, distracted very easily apologize for that the cost you know a hundred bucks a day well let me talk about some of the vacation costs you know the house that we are renting you know in a, we I am not like made of money you know I have a single income I have a wife who works a part-time job very part-time job and she's you know that we do that you know on purpose we want her to be available for the kids and um, she's an amazing mother and wife um, she could work full-time if she wanted to but we are we're not trying to do that oh gosh I got a little fuel light coming on I really hope there is a gas station down here somewhere but uh, so the, the house, you know, that we are renting down here, and this is, you know, our big summer vacation, so we only do this once a year, but it was, you know, for 12, 11 nights, I think, it's like 3400 bucks, and that was cheap, like, compar comparatively to some of the houses that are go for rent, like, we didn't get one with a pool, we didn't get one with a hot tub, you know, there's no luxury, it's, it's a nice house, I'm, I'm thankful and grateful for it, but... Trust me, I, I scrimp and save wherever I can when it comes to these things. Um, that's cool. This lighting is so neat. And uh, anyway, so so that is like you know three hundred dollars a night or something when you do the math uh, for the house, and which is you know compared to a hotel room. You know, I think it's worth it uh, for a whole family to be able to stay in a house. But, you know, uh, we went out to dinner the other the other day when we went to Kitty Hawk. And uh, our youngest did not order anything. Uh, we had drinks, like, uh, not, not alcoholic drinks, but, like, we had, you know, the kids had sodas. I had a diet, Pepsi or whatever, and um, my wife had a soda. The drinks alone were 20 bucks for our family of five because there was $3.99 a piece. So, you know, if that's not a plug for water, I don't know what it is. Um, so, by the time it was all said and done, my, my wife and I actually, I'm sorry, my wife and my daughter actually split a meal um, that was like $24. This wasn't even, you know, some uppity gourmet restaurant. It was just a sit-down little uh, diner place. Uh, the run, the rundown cafe in Kitty Hawk. And by the time we all, I had a burger, my son had a burger off the kids menu, so that was only eight bucks. And by the time we all, and, and they got a dessert. Okay, so they, they, the kids shared one dessert. So we did it as cheap as we could, and the bill was still a uh, hundred bucks by the time we added the tip. So that's why a lot of nights we will grocery shop and um, 
and uh, make dinner at, at the house, you know, because you can't afford to go uh, every night, go out and... Wow, that's amazing. Every night, go out and, um, and eat, because it's, it's super expensive. Um, I, I took my kids today uh, to the to the arcade, you know, like video game arcade, and you know, bless their hearts, they really didn't play that many video games because it seemed like a waste of money. They did a lot of the skill building games, where you know, ski ball and um, uh, bop a mole and things like that, you know, because they get tickets for it, and then just like it, like a carnival or, or whatever, uh, you take the tickets and you can get a prize, right? So, um, I think, um, my oldest daughter got something like 900 points with hers. Here's the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum, by the way. Um, but she got 900 points with hers, and, uh, she got, like, a couple of bracelets and a couple of pieces of candy, and that was it. This museum is really awesome. They just opened again. If you've never been down to the graveyard of the, of the Atlantic Museum, highly recommend it. Very interesting. Very, uh, very cool to visit. We're going to turn around and finish up the conversation, hopefully in a place to watch, look at the sunset for a second. Yeah, this is where you pick up the ferry um, to go to Ocracoke. Um, and those ferries, you can eat. Whoa, there's a <laughs> there's a there's a walk-on ferry, and there's also a. I don't want to go there. It says Coast Guard. I'll get in trouble. There's a walk-on ferry. There's also a, uh, a ferry that transports your cars, and it's completely free. It's it's really cool. It's completely free to to use the ferry. It takes like 45 minutes or something to get to Ocracoke, but it's um it's cool. It's worth it's worth visiting. It, um, not a lot for little kids to do on Ocracoke, but anyway, back to my conversation about about cost, right? So I uh, went to the arcade, you know, and the kids. I gave them, got them each $35 cards, and then my, my three-year-old, almost four-year-old, uh, and I, we, we got a $20 card, you know, so she could play some games. And so that was $90, 90 bucks to, I'm trying to figure out a way to get closer to the water over here. Man, here's some gas pumps, so maybe I can use those. Parking along Dockside. It's a cool spot. Just ignore me. I'm just trying to see the sunset. Um, yeah, so, you know, 90 bucks just to go to the arcade. And I know I don't have to bring my kids to these places, but I'm trying to help them have a good time and, you know, can't go to the beach all day every day it'll wear you out like crazy I think this is a good spot to uh, shut it down like I never knew this place was even back here and so, for less than it costs, or about the same as it costs to go to the arcade with the kids, or less than it costs to, to take the family out to dinner, I can ride this, and um, just, you know, just for an hour or two a day, two hours a day, I can um, kind of do my own thing, and just take a little break, and um, just absolutely enjoy 
uh, the Elder Banks just that much more, you know. Um, and so to me, like, for those three reasons, um, it's worth it to rent a motorcycle when on vacation. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, um, and I really appreciate everyone watching. I appreciate you, your sub subscribing to Rev Remoto if you haven't subscribed, and um, also uh, just uh, also remember to hit that like button. I appreciate that uh, that as well. That helps helps my channel a lot. Um, so you know, God bless, and um, check back because I'm gonna make a few more videos before I gotta uh, give this thing back. Um, I've got it for a few more days, so. I'm enjoying the heck out of it and uh, doing everything that I can possibly do riding around with it. Alright guys, we'll see you in the next video. Love you and God bless you.